All right, my friends, let's take a look at example three. There are many correct answers. So, and hopefully as I go through it, you'll see how many, how like there's infinitely many correct answers. So they're just things that we're looking for, for this to work out. So, um, so in order for you to have a single solution, um, you would need to have three equations with three variables. And so you could basically just start making up combinations of X, Y, and Z. So like, let's just say I throw down X plus Y plus Z. Um, and then you just figure out the number that has to go here for where this is a solution, okay? So if negative 5, negative 2, 1 is a solution to this equation, then that would mean negative 5 plus negative 2 plus 1 would, you know, have to be the answer that you have on the right side. So what is that? I think that's negative 6. And so there you go. I've got one equation down, and then I just need to do two more. Now let's talk about what you don't want to do for the other equations. You don't want to use x plus y plus z again um, because you're looking for a single solution problem and these two planes will be parallel um, or the same plane if you don't do something creative with the coefficients. You also don't want to do something like, you know, 5x plus 5y plus 5z. Um, that will also be either parallel or the same as the first equation. So you want to try to kind of create some, even something simple like x minus y plus e. Like that would not be parallel to the original because it's not like just a scalar multiple of the original um, equation there. So, uh, so let's say I go with that one, then I'd have negative 5 plus 2 plus 1. Um, so that would be negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. So then I would have to have a negative 2 on the right side. So notice I'm just making up combinations of x, y, and z, and then I plug the numbers in to figure out what the constant term would have to be. That's all, that's all you do. Um, anyway, so let's say uh, last one, let's have it be 2x um, plus y, maybe minus z, something like that, okay? So that would be, what would that be? Negative 10 minus 2 minus 1, so negative 13. There we go. Then I've got a system of equations where if you solve it, you'd get a single solution, and it would be negative 5, negative 2, 1. Unless I screwed up arithmetic somewhere, but hopefully I didn't. <laughs> All right, my friends. Um, example 4, write an equation of the parabola that passes through the given points. There are a couple different ways to do this problem, but probably the most straightforward would be to just take the points and then substitute, like, you know, in this case, 1 in for x and 3 in for y simultaneously in this generic form of a parabola. So it would look like this. 3 equals a times your x value squared plus b times your x value plus c. And then I'm going to simplify that. So I basically have 3 equals a plus b plus c. So notice I have three unknowns. And so I'll need three equations. But that's good because they gave us three points. So we'll just use each one. So 2, 2. 2 goes in for y. And then 2 would go in for x. and then simplify it. The person you're simplifying for is yourself. So give yourself the gift of simplifying your math. Anyway, um, and then 3, negative 3. Let's put that in. And then we'd end up with negative 3 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. Well, looky there. I have a system of equations in three variables, and so now I just need to know how to solve it. So I'm going to assess the situation. You know, I want to eliminate either A's, B's, or C's, knowing I have to do it twice, and I'm definitely going to go for eliminating C's. So let's get started. Um, between row, uh, row 1 and row 2, I'm just going to do the opposite of row 1. And then row two, you'll notice that I have a tendency, instead of subtracting rows, like some people do, I have a tendency to always set myself up to add rows. Um, so then let's see, I think that's what we get. There we go, yeah, okay. Now I need to eliminate C again, and I need to uh, involve the third equation there. Um, and so I am going to do row two and row three in efforts to keep, like, kind of keep my numbers low. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's do, let's do the opposite of row three, I think. Let's try that. Three equals negative nine A minus three B minus C. And then let's add it to row two.
Okay, so then I'd have 5 equals negative 5a minus b. There we go, and I set myself up kind of nicely there. So between equation 1 and equation 2, all I'd have to do is add them together um, to get b to eliminate out. And so if I add those together, I'd end up with 4 equals negative 2a, and then divide both sides by negative 2, and I get a would have been negative 2. And then to find b, um, I think I like putting it back, substituting it in there. Let's see, negative 6, add it over, so it looks like b would be 5. And then now that I know two of the um, values, I'm going to go back to one of the original equations. I really like row 1, so I'm just going to use that one because it's simplest. And so um, that would give me 3 would equal a plus b plus c. Um, looks like 3 equals 3 plus c, so c would have to be 0. There we go. Now, we just did a lot of work, but you do want to make sure that you finish the problem out. They wanted to ask you to find the equation of a parabola of that form that passes through those three points. So your final answer would be um, negative 2x squared plus 5x, and then you could say plus 0 or not. There we go. All right, my friends, that was a long lesson, but hopefully you picked up some new stuff and uh, feel good about the content. If not, I hope you'll ask me questions. Good luck on the problem set. Take care, everybody.